Andrew Dye here in the Unity Homes showroom in Walpole, New Hampshire. This video is all about the windows that we use for Unity Homes. The windows that we use are made by a company called Logic. They're made in this country, but they're made with components that are licensed from Europe. So the uh, frame and sash components are produced here in this country. The hardware comes from Europe. The glass is domestic, uh, but they're all assembled here in this country. They're made by a company called Logic Windows. They also make the glass doors that we use for Unity Homes, but this video is gonna focus just on the windows. Why do we use these windows? Well, there are lots of window options out there on the market, and uh, a lot of them are good windows, but we find that these windows in particular are the best value for what we're trying to achieve with Unity Homes. So these are called tilt-turn windows, and that refers to the operation. There's the tilt operation, where they tilt in from the top, principally for ventilation, when the handle is in the vertical position. And the turn mode, when the handle is horizontal, means that they turn inward. So this is obviously very handy for cleaning the outside of the window. So the tilt turn windows, they're all triple glazed, three layers of glazing, and they're double gasketed. So where the sash meets the frame, there's two different gaskets for air sealing, making sure that the windows are airtight. So that makes them very energy efficient, the triple glazing, the frames and the sash themselves are insulated. They're made from a material called UPVC, uh, which is not thermally conductive particularly. So they're, they're very energy efficient, they're very airtight, and that is consistent. That helps to support the energy efficiency goals of Unity Homes. We like the practicality of them, the tilt-turn mechanism, and we like the fact that they can be mounted in the middle of the wall. So Unity Homes are quite thick, a little over a foot thick, 12 inches thick, and there are certain advantages to mounting the window in the middle of the wall, so not all the way out on the outside of the wall, not all the way on the inside, but mid-mounted. And these windows lend themselves to that mid-mount application. It has, again, certain uh, durability advantages, certain thermal advantages. Overall, we think this is a great value. They're not inexpensive windows, but they're not as expensive as windows can get, and they're a good fit for Unity Homes. When it comes to installing the windows, we will install all of the windows for your home in the shop. So in our panel prefabrication facility, there's an area called the gantry where all the wall panels are lined up when they're nearly complete. The last step is to install the windows and doors in those wall panels. And it's a pretty sophisticated operation where the rough openings are prepped with special tapes and then the windows are installed with brackets and then they're sealed around the window, there's foam that's installed, and basically it's a very deliberate, highly developed installation process that helps to ensure that there will not be any air leaks or water leaks, no issues with the windows down the line. Windows are historically kind of one of the weak links in the envelope of a house, so by installing the windows and doors in the control conditions of the shop with people who are following standard operating procedures with all the right materials, all the right tools, uh, helps to ensure that there won't be any issues with the windows or the doors down the line. As with anything, there are compromises in any material choice. And so, as I mentioned, these aren't the least expensive windows. These are very high quality windows. And, and so the cost is proportional to that. During the pandemic, we had some issues with lead time on the windows, but of course that was happening with all kinds of materials that settled down. But the, still the lead time on the windows is one of the critical factors in the schedule of our projects. And so uh, as soon as a build contract is signed with Unity, then we order the windows because we know that they could be a couple of months out, maybe as much as three months out, and we, we don't want to start producing the wall panels until we have the windows in our facilities. So that's on the critical path for producing the panels and ultimately for our delivering the panels to your job site. Because the windows are mid-mounted, that means that they require extension jams both on the interior and on the exterior to sort of make up the rest of the thickness of the wall. And so these are interior extension jams on three sides and then the bottom of the opening is typically finished with a sill. There are different styles of interior finish, which we'll get into. And on the exterior of the window, you can't really see it, but there are uh, similar extension jams that are about five inches wide that go out to the plane where the siding is attached to the outside wall. So extension jams on the inside and on the outside, not a big deal. It's just that carpentry that's needed for the mid-mounted windows. And, and we have details that 
show how all that is to be done. A couple of sort of minor points, uh, the glazing that's used in these windows is not available in impact resistant glass and so there are certain jurisdictions like Dade County, Florida, for example, where glass is required to kind of, you know, resist shooting a two by four out of a cannon or something. And so this glass doesn't pass the impact resistant tests. If you are in one of those few, if you're building in one of those areas where that's a requirement and it's very few areas, then there are ways around that in terms of exterior shutters, uh, things like that, that protect the glass. But I can't think of a project yet where that's actually come up, a, a unity project in the, you know, close to 200 homes that we've built over the last 10 years. Final thing I'll mention is just the, the UPVC itself. And PVC is not considered a particularly green material, but any material that's durable can be considered sustainable in some ways. Any material we use in construction is gonna be somewhat of a compromise. The, the UPVC, the U part, makes it more recyclable theoretically because it doesn't have some of the nasty chemicals, the plasticizers that, that may be found in PVC. So it's a compromise, we can live with it, we think it's a good value, we think it makes sense for our homes, and there are lots of other companies building high-performance homes that are using UPVC windows as well for their many benefits. So I talked about how the windows open, the tilt mode from the top hinged at the bottom, the turn mode, the windows come in left and right versions, uh, so windows with the handle on the left, and windows with the handle on the right and in the floor plans that we develop for your design we will indicate the hinging of the windows the left-handed or the right-handed on the floor plans there's a little key that shows which way it goes and uh, so it's important to pay attention to that key to understand how your windows are going to operate Obviously, windows that open in will have implications for the furniture in the room, so you don't want to have something tall in front of a window where the window could potentially open up and hit it. You also don't want to have a window opening onto a kitchen sink faucet that is sticking up above the bottom of the window. So if there are two windows above the kitchen sink, it's nice to center the faucet uh, between the two windows so that both of the sashes clear that faucet when they open or to get a faucet that's low enough if you have a single opening window above your sink get a faucet that's low enough that the bottom of the window clears it or make the window high enough to clear it or have a fixed window so they come in left and right versions they also come in fixed unit versions uh, we would typically use those up high, say in a vaulted xyla in a gable end where nobody's ever gonna get up there to open the window anyway. You save a little bit of money going with a fixed window. So that's something else to pay attention to in your plan. So go through the floor plan and think about how you're gonna use the room and think about the windows, uh, which ones you're gonna wanna open, maybe for cross ventilation during the summertime, which ones you're probably never gonna wanna open. And again, you can save some money by going with the fixed windows rather than operable windows. So in addition to the, the swing options, the left and the right, the windows come in different sizes. This one happens to be uh, a medium sized window. We, we have them in small, medium, and large. Uh, and we, we stick with those sizes for Unity. That's one of the ways that we're able to provide more efficiency and value by limiting the number of choices. But we found that these three sizes actually work well for most of our projects. And so this is a medium sized window. The, Larger window is the same width, they're all the same width. The larger window comes down lower and the smaller window doesn't come down as far. And the head heights typically are all fixed. So you're gonna see the same head height in a, in a room or in a house going around for the tops of the windows and what varies is how far down from that head height the window comes if it's a small window a medium window or a large window some there is some variation that's possible with the windows but that gets into the personalized version of our design path a more expensive time consuming version if you will so we try to keep people on the streamlined path which is the best value in terms of design and that means sticking with the, the standard window sizes another option that's available for the windows is the color and so here you I'm kind of colorblind. I think this is black. Um, it might be really dark green, but uh, you can see on the inside and the outside, maybe you can't. Uh, this is a, a standard option. Black is a standard option. It is more expensive than the other standard option, which is white on the inside and the outside. A lot of the windows end up white, although this black is kind of a, a contemporary look that's been popular in the last few years. Uh, various colors are available. Also, they 
represent an upcharge, uh, and that would be again more in the personalized, the kind of more custom path. The, the finish on this is actually a foil finish that's kind of baked on, it's not painted. It, it's challenging to paint these windows, so it's good to get the color right with the initial order. And the last option that I'll talk about is divided lights. You can see that this is basically a four light window created by these mutton bars. Uh, they're simulated divided lights, and so the triple pane glass is continuous behind that for thermal efficiency so that it's not broken here. The divided lights are an upgrade. The majority of our homes don't opt for this. These divided light kind of grills on the inside and the outside, uh, it would just be a, a one light window in most cases. Actually, there's one other option that I should mention, which are the screens, the flex screens, and um, they pop in and out of a groove. All the windows come with screens. Uh, I'm not gonna attempt to take the screens out and put them back in, but we have another video that talks about adjusting the windows and doors sort of so that they are tuned properly and closed properly because occasionally they get out of adjustment with some movement with changes in temperature. And that video shows how to work with the flex screens. So I mentioned that we always install the windows in the shop. We install most of the doors in the shop. I typically will leave one door uninstalled to be the construction entrance and that door gets installed later on site. But along with installing the windows in the shop, we will typically install the interior extension jam. So that's these pieces here. If the client, if you the owner, have selected the trim detail that is a sheetrock corner bead. And so the idea is that we pre-install these extension jams in the shop on three sides and then on site after the sheetrock is installed, a corner bead gets installed around the three sides of the window opening. Here's a piece of that extension jam. And so the extension jam is grooved. Uh, this would be an example of uh, an L bead, a right angle corner bead. This is a 45 degree corner bead on this particular example. So basically the uh, extension jams get installed around the opening. A piece of this bead gets installed so that the leg fits into the groove and then this perforated part overlaps on the sheetrock like that. It gets all mudded in and painted and then a finished sill, typically either Douglas fir like this one or maple, gets installed to finish the opening off. So we call that our type 6 window trim. It's the sheetrock corner bead trim. There are different beads that uh, work with that style. But again, if that's the trim that's chosen, then we will provide and install in the shop the extension jams around three sides of the opening. And then the sills we would typically supply as part of a tempo package, a package of materials that we often supply that are installed by the local contractors on site. The other standard version of window trim that Unity offers is more of a conventional wood casing. And so there would be wooden extension jams around all four sides, and there would be a flat casing, like a one by four casing on the sides and the top. If we're supplying that as part of a tempo package, it's all pre-finished. It comes with a clever sort of uh, slip joint detail that makes installation quite fast. And uh, that's an upgrade option. It's more expensive than the, you know, just getting the sills from us and doing the sheetrock corner bead. It, it really comes down to a question of taste and budget. Some people prefer the cleaner look of the corner bead detail and others like the more traditional look of the wood casing. The wood casing can be natural finished. It can be painted. Different kinds of wood can be used. And, and if you don't opt for a tempo package, then any detail is really possible that you and your local builder want to come up with for finishing the interiors of the windows as long as there's that extension jam component of it. I want to talk a little bit about window treatment options because the way that you would finish in terms of interior decorating a window like this is going to be different than the way you would finish a double hung window which just goes up and down or a casement window which is going to open out. Because these open in, anything that is in front of this window is going to obstruct the opening of the window. So you can go with curtains where you have a curtain rod mounted above the window, kind of on the face of the wall, and the curtains would come back far enough so that the window could be opened without running into the curtains coming down the side. If you wanted shades that would just come down and up vertically, it's possible to mount the shades above. Uh, sometimes people will build what's called a valence, which is sort of a little trim box, a little wooden box, to hide the roller shade above the window, and then the shade just pulls down and comes up. Those are okay options. Uh, to my mind, they look a little clunky, 
There are systems that are designed to work specifically with these tilt turn windows and sometimes they're mounted directly to the sash. So if you're looking for privacy, there are blinds that you can get that mount to the top of the sash and just come down or even come up from the bottom, sort of pleated Venetian blinds. Um, it's also possible to get obscured glass if you want permanent privacy, say for a window in a bathroom. But the, the treatments that are mounted on the sash make a lot of sense for these windows because then the treatments just kind of follow the glass and um, they're pretty unobtrusive. The, there's a company called Fenstermon that uh, we recommend people contact. They're based in California. They've got some good videos and their specialty is providing window treatments for these European style tilt turn windows. So we do have another video that describes how to adjust these windows in the unlikely event that they get out of adjustment. Typically we'll have the windows adjusted after the shell of the house is assembled to make sure that they're all operating properly. They latch the way they're supposed to. They're all lined up. They're all sealing properly. Occasionally with extremes of temperature changes, cold and hot, the the windows might move a little bit, and we have this other video in which Ray Zabel shows how to adjust the windows and the doors to make sure that they're operating properly. And the windows are fairly maintenance-free. I mean, they need to be cleaned, but that's easy to do. The moving parts should be lubricated once a year, and aside from that, they really don't need much. The windows have, uh, they come with a kind of standard 10-year warranty, and if there are any issues with the windows, then you would reach out to Unity, you'd reach out to your project manager, and we would uh, coordinate getting the windows serviced. I think that's it. If you have any questions that weren't answered, feel free to put them in the comments under this video or reach out to one of Unity's sales advisors via a contact us form on Unity's website. Thank you for watching.